Welcome back, Cam. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? Uh, excellent. You're I'm, looking uh, good. Thank you. Fit. What's with the suit? Uh, oh, the suit. Well, I wanted to look pretty for you. Oh, thank you. No, actually, um, I feel so uh, underdressed. <laughs> no, I'm uh, speaking at uh, AltaCorp. Uh, oh. Their their conference is in Toronto later today, so I'll be over there. The Institutional Energy Cannabis. And yeah, it's Energy Cannabis and Life Sciences. I think. Oh, how appropriate. Yes. All three things in mm -hmm. one little box. Excellent, Cam. You guys put out a great press release today that really sort of changes the conversation about Aurora and really the sector in general yep. in that you're projecting, you've actually given guidance and you're projecting revenue between 50 and 55 million yep. with positive EBITDA in Q2 2019. Now that's the period ending December 31st, 2018. 18 on the calendar? Is that so uh, we're, we're uh, providing guidance on our revenues for the, the period ended December 31st, 2018. But we're also looking forward, and this is critical, uh, we're looking forward to uh, the, uh, by the end of the second calendar quarter of 2019, uh, we are now projecting uh, positive EBITDA, and that is a major, major shift. It's a big deal for us. It's a big deal for the sector. It's what uh, the institutions are looking for, uh, and uh, and it signals something important for Aurora. Um, we have been in a powerful growth phase. We have been growing organically, obviously. We've been very, very busy with M&A, uh, and now, now what we're signaling is that we've achieved substantially what we need to in terms of creating this global integrated cannabis company, although there'll be some more moves uh, into in additional international markets. Now we get to shift gears and focus on uh, disciplined execution and cost management because we're, we're gonna be moving into the era of profitability and that's, uh, that's a huge deal. Hmm. Interesting. So then, is this is not necessarily a surprise to you, management, or to investors who have been following the story closely. Yeah. This is more or less delivering on what you've said you were going to deliver on and a little bit ahead of schedule. That's, that's exactly it. And if you, if you take a look at what we've achieved in the last year, it's enormous. A year ago, in January 2018, we had production capacity of about 5,000 kilograms per year. Twelve months later, we have uh, 20 times uh, that production on an annual run rate basis. So a lot has happened in the last year and it has been according to plan. Now one of the reasons why we wanted to provide guidance uh, this time around, it's the first time we've done it, is, uh, well, a couple things. One, uh, in the last earnings season, it was a crowded earnings season and we delivered a very, very strong quarter. And it was followed by uh, some uh, other companies that, uh, that reported not su such strong quarters, let's say. Uh, and we felt that we maybe got a little bit lost in the shuffle. So we wanted to do that, uh, among other things. We wanted to separate us out from the pack because we're very, very pleased and very proud uh, at the way we're executing. Um, in addition, it's been, I think, a little bit challenging, particularly in the last couple of quarters, for analysts to uh, produce uh, estimates, to project um, uh, forward-going uh, revenue and EBITDA. And so we wanted to provide them a basis for clarity on that. And that's exactly what we've done here. And if you take a look at the uh, release that we put out today, not only does it indicate uh, a range of uh, revenue that we anticipate reporting on February 11th of uh, between 50 and 55 million, net of excise taxes, let me add, if we had included the excise taxes, it would have been several million higher. Um, but we also wanted to make it very, very clear that uh, we've uh, managed to uh, get a, a real strong handle on our costs and, and a good idea as to what they're going to be going forward. And revenues are going to be rising significantly faster uh, than costs. And that's what gives us a, a high degree of confidence that we can project positive EBITDA in the second calendar quarter. So if you want to track where we're going to go, it's, it's pretty simple now. It's uh, watching our production rise over the course of 20 2019 and then 2020, uh, uh, applying uh, the, uh, the gross margins and the EBITDA that you anticipate we're going to be able to achieve and we're going to be very transparent about that. And that should give you a really good idea as to where, uh, uh, where we're going to be in terms of revenue uh, and EBITDA um, throughout the subsequent quarters in 2019 and into 2020. It should make it a little bit simpler for analysts. And I mean, the, uh, the real startling example of, of how difficult I think it's been for analysts, I think was maybe Canopy in the last quarter, where the range of uh, analyst estimates, I think went from about 31 million to 83 million. That's a heck of a range. So we're trying to make things a little bit easier, a little bit clearer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, um, you know, that's very positive, but it does beg the question, and as a shareholder in Aurora, I really want to know, that's great. Positive EBITDA is fantastic. It's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. 
But at what point do we see actual profitability? You're looking for positive cash flow. Um, I think we're looking at the third calendar quarter of this year. So it would be our Q1 2020. Hmm. So in the third calendar quarter of the year, positive EBITDA. The subsequent quarter after that, positive cash flow. Wow, so that means profitability is just on the horizon. Yeah, it really is. Oh, that's great. Yeah, okay. and it's been, it's, been, it, it's been, like for us on the inside, it, mm -hmm. it's been an exciting uh, uh, period, but it's been a long road. And, and yet, at the same time, we only started to sell product uh, three years ago today, so in January of 2016. Hmm. Uh, that's when we actually started to sell product. That was the beginning of our commercial operations. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, so you know, a lot of this is obviously predicated on the obvious successful deployment of resources as personified in the Aurora Sky facility. Yes. And so you also, in this press release, released some video uh -huh. of that Aurora Sky facility. Of Aurora Sky and a number of our other uh, facilities uh, that are now up and running from Aurora V to Aurora O in Le Chute, Quebec, to the Bradford Med Relief facility, uh, yeah, and, and ICC Labs as well in uh, Uruguay. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so what we're looking at here in the background Aurora is Aurora Sky. Sky. And that facility is over a million uh, square feet. It's 800,000 square feet, 100,000 plus kilograms of, uh, of cannabis production per year, premium quality cannabis. And that is working smashingly. So all the automation is working, the technology is working, we're getting the yields anticipated, and that right off the bat with the very first harvest, that's an exceedingly good piece of news because we're very confident that we're gonna be able to increase our yields and our productivity per square foot from there. So we're already producing yields that will give Give us that 100,000 per uh, 100,000 kilograms per annum uh, production, uh, hmm. but we think that we can actually go north from there. So it's a very, very good sign. Wow, that is so exciting. Um, okay, so what other sort of international nuggets are you going to deliver for us in this this 2019? Uh, a ton, a ton of uh, additional international nuggets and a ton of additional catalysts, uh, all um, in the short term. To I guess we're talking about the next couple of quarters. So um, ICC Labs, we're going to be hearing news from them. We're uh, going to uh, we expect to get to the definitive agreement with respect to Pharmacias Magistrales. Farmacias Magistrales. Very well said. In, in Mexico. <laughs> uh, and I am brushing up on my yeah. Spanish now that we have a uh, you know, significant, significant commitment to Latin America. Right. Um, and then also uh, in, the, in this quarter, uh, in the January to March quarter, uh, we anticipate beginning to sell our oils, our cannabis oils, in Germany. And uh, that's going to be a big deal as well. There's significant demand uh, for oils in Germany. Uh, it's, uh, that, that demand is not being satisfied. Uh, we think that we can move in in a big way and we've got some very attractive products that we can't wait to get onto the German market. Wow, fantastic. So 2019 is just going to be a stellar year for Aurora. Yeah, and, and then beyond that, uh, uh, the whole sector, uh, the whole industry is looking forward to uh, the coming into force of the new Canadian regulations uh, that will allow us to bring into the consumer market uh, the concentrates and edibles. So all of these product forms that we've all been looking forward to, ranging from um, uh, vape pens uh, to cannabis-infused beverages and various edibles, but also concentrates, uh, including keef and even uh, hashish, uh, things like that. These are things that we we couldn't imagine talking about uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago, but here we are talking about them today. You bet. Well, mm -hmm. that's great. Cam, congratulations on all of that. We'll Thank come you. back to you soon. Thanks for joining me today. You bet.